This video is gonna show you how you can return the previous row value in Power Query. So when we're working with a very basic data set that just contains a single task and some cumulatively reported hours that are reported once every while, then there's an easy way to grasp your previous row number. Now, first make sure you understand the data because what you can see is that there is a date in which the hours are reported and for most of the records, there is a month in between, but there is also a time when there is two months in between, and that's between the first two records. So our goal is to get the previously reported record returned. And to do that, I'm gonna teach you a trick. You can go to add columns and you add an index column. Then I'd like you to add another index column that starts from one, whereas the first one started from zero. So as you can see, the numbers now refer to each other. And the big trick to get to previous value, uh, a quite well-performing trick as well, is to use the merge queries right here. So what you can do is you go home, merge queries, and you're gonna merge it with itself. And now here you'll have to look carefully because let's focus on line two here on the top. So on line two, we see 35 hours reported and we'd like to have uh, the previously reported number. So the number 10, we'd like next to it. So the number one that you find here is also a number one that you find there. So we're gonna have a left join on the number one on this table and the number one on that table. Then we press okay. Now what's left to do for us is to open the hours spent cumulatively and I will rename it to previous so our spent cumulative previous now what's left for us is to sort this by date and you'll find that the reported was the first uh, in the first record was 10 hours and there is no record that has a value previously to that and in the second record there's 35 hours and the previously reported is 10. that's easy enough and what's left to do is to subtract these two from each other. Now, it's, I see it's still a text value, so we can convert this to a whole number. But there is a challenge here. If we try to subtract these two from each other, we're gonna not get a, the right result. So if you select these two, click Add Column, uh, Standard and Subtract, then all the values are correct, except the first one. In the first value, you try to subtract a null value from number 10. And in Power Query, it doesn't like it. You could like you could have another approach to fix this. You can go to add columns, and a function that takes into account null values is the list sum. Now we wanted to subtract our numbers, so how do we solve this? Well, the list sum, oh I need, I mean, say, I'm missing a T. So the list sum, it requires you to provide a list that it needs to sum up. So the first sum we wanna do is this column. And then if you wanna subtract it, you just add a minus sign next to this one. So you can add a minus of this new previous column. You close your list with a curly bracket and you close your brackets. And then here is the mutation. And now in the end here, you find your mutation. So if you want to report in Power Query or move this to Power BI, then you can use this column to see what the mutation is compared to the previous time. Okay, so that's the easiest trick to do, but we're not there yet. This is when there is only a single task. It might very well be that you have multiple tasks that you're working with. So we're going to move to a data set here that looks similar, but has multiple tasks. So there's A1, A2, and B1. And we're gonna try to do the same thing, but we need a different approach because our index column needs to respect each of the different tasks. To do that, you can, first of all, group the task column. You go home and click on group, uh, oh, wrong click. You go click on the task, you click on group by, and then you click on all rows and say details. What I'm doing here is I'm returning all the unique values of the task and all the rows that are grouped in that operation are gonna be in a table object. So I'm clicking OK. And this is the table object that I'm talking about. 
So each of the rows that are visible here are the rows that have been grouped, if that makes sense. In previous example, I showed you that we can go to index column and add an index column from one. But we want to do this for each of these tables. Now I'm going to teach you something here that is a little bit more advanced. Have a look at the formula bar here. When you click on add index column, the formula table dot add index column is included. We're going to be applying this formula on each of those table objects and it works in the same way. So the easiest thing to do for you is to just copy the formula here. And if you like, you can just remove this one. And then we're gonna add a custom column and you paste the formula that you just copied. And you take away one of the equal signs. And then our new table is called details indexed. Now, one thing we need to change still is the table at index column needs you to input the table as a first argument, the table which you wanna add the index to. So instead of indexing it to the previous group rows, this was the step that we did before. We're now going to add a step here that is called details. So our first, uh, our table that we add the index to is in the details column that we see right here. Now, once you have this, you can click OK. And now you can see that this was the old table and our new table has an index that uh, has a sequence that goes, uh, goes up from one. And the next one goes up to six, and this one goes up to six, and this one to five. So that's plenty for now. And if you want to make things easy, we're, we just have to see, get back to our normal data now. So you can remove everything except this new table column, and you can expand all of the columns. So now we have an index column here. Now, to make it easy for you, you can add a column, and you can subtract a single value from what we have here. So in the, in the same way, you have another index that starts with a different number. And then just like with the other time, you have to uh, merge this. You go to Merge Queries, and you're gonna merge it with itself, and you have a good look here. So if I'm at uh, A1, or uh, like the, the second line, I see a two here and a one here. So this line here with the one, I wanted to return the value on the line with this number one here. So we need to match it in this way. But we have to be careful because this time is not just about the index column, but we also need to match it on the task. So hold your control button. You see this little two up here and hold your control button and click here as well. And 14 out of 17 rows will have been matched. Now you can open everything up, click on your hours spent cumulatively and then again, it's uh, the previous one reported. And you have to be careful that your data is sorted. So you sort it by task and you sort it by date. And then if you look on the first line for A1, you'll find that previously reported was nothing. But on the second line, previously reported was 10. And that's correct. And of course, what's then left to do is we can transform this to a whole number. And if you want to have your mutation, we do the same trick as earlier. You click on a list sum, open up your curly brackets, and you take the hours spent and the negative of the hours spent previously to prevent the null value from not fixing your, from, from not showing up. Close your curly brackets, close your normal brackets. And here you have your mutation. Okay, so that's how you can return the previous row value in a data set, even if it has multiple hierarchies. Just be careful that if you have multiple hierarchies, you need to have your index column respect each of the levels. Now, it's still quite a challenge, and I hope this made sense. If this is too difficult, of course, you could also make sure that your data has been transformed before you get it into your data set. In your SQL database, you could do it in Excel if you find it easier. But if you're working with Power Query, this is an easy way to do it. So I hope to provide value for you. If you did like it, please comment uh, below uh, what kind of situations you're using it for. And uh, yeah, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time.